What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's video is all about keywords and titles and styles of clothing that you might not know when you are listing your items. And this pertains to fashion, specifically shirts, blouses, and tops. Your response was overwhelming that you definitely wanted a keyword video. I got so many comments from so many of you saying that you wanted a keyword and style video. So I am bringing that to you guys, but I'm gonna have to break it up into parts because there's so much to go over. I'm going to go over all kinds of different keywords and style names that you can use when you're creating your listings for the items that you find to sell on eBay or Poshmark. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Ashley and I sell on eBay and Amazon part-time, but actually close to full-time now because my kids are in school, which is crazy to me. It's kind of blowing my mind. Also, side note, my office is just a disaster. It's chaos, but it is organized chaos. I know where everything is and I know what's going on. It just looks ridiculous right now. If I were to wait to clean this up before I made another video, like I don't think I'd make a video for another month or two. So I'm just gonna let you guys in a sneak peek in the chaos right now. I promise it will get cleaned up soon, but like I just have found so much stuff recently. I've gotten so much inventory and I haven't had the time until recently to really tackle it. So I resell on eBay and Amazon. I sell whatever I find, yard sales, garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, all kinds of stuff I find locally and I'm here to share exactly how I do it so that you can too. If you want to learn about my very favorite way that I find inventory, look in the description below. I have an ebook all about how I've made a lot of money from garage sales and yard sales alone. So definitely check that out. I share what I look for, how I plan my day so that I get to the best sales at the best time and I know what they're looking for, making connections with people. It has paid off in dividends for me making connections locally, finding things locally. There's so much wonderful stuff to be found. So I share all of that in my ebook. Again, link is in the description below. But in the meantime, let's Let's go over styles and names for tops, blouses, and shirts. And I've talked about this before. When you find an item, it's not enough to just say in your title, Lululemon top, long sleeve, size medium, or whatever, size six, size eight. Like that's just not going to be sufficient to get you the views that you want. So there is a specific way that you want to create your titles in your eBay listings. So the first five words in your title matter the most according to eBay. And what I usually put in are brand, size, style, type, color, and then sometimes I put in the gender. If it's a brand that has mostly women's clothes and I want to highlight that it's a top for men, I will put men's top. I don't always put in women's or men's in my title personally. It's just not something I do all the time, but you totally can. Um, so for example, I would say J. Crew size medium, peplum button down blouse, white, and then I can put in long sleeve, short sleeve, three quarter sleeve, fabric details, cotton, silk, whatever. Um, and I'll go into more detail a little bit later on how to do that. But yeah, you wanna make those first five words count the most. And the order in which you put things, I don't think really matters personally. I almost always put the brand name first, unless it's vintage, then I might say vintage brand, vintage Patagonia, and then finish my title. But just be aware that keep the most important keywords to the front of the title and use as many spaces and letters and words as you can within your title. So fill that sucker out with all kinds of keywords and details, as many as you can. Now, if you're to go into my eBay store and look at all my listings, you may see some inconsistency with me. This is not like a perfect thing. I kind of just write titles that sound good to me. <laughs> um, so do what works for you. I don't want you to be too crazy or hyper about exactly how you title something you know it's more of a guideline do what works do what's right for you do what sounds good do what flows right and that's kind of just what i do if i find the style name of something i'm going to stick that in there right after brand and size i'll put the style name right in the front of the title um, because i think it sounds good and i think it sounds professional but that aside now that i've covered the absolute basics of a title i'm going to go into some keywords that you can fill in because i remember when i first started selling fashion especially I was like, I don't know what words to use. Like, I don't know how to fill out my title. It was a real stretch to figure out what I put in there because as someone who doesn't really know fashion that much or didn't at the time, all I knew was it's a shirt, it's short sleeve, and that's it. So I'm just here to tell you there's a lot more detail you can add in if you want. So you wanna go by for shirts like cut and material. When it comes to the cut, things can be cropped, which means that they are above the waistline. So that just means that they are cropped a little higher and sometimes things can be a tunic which means they are loose fit and flowy and longer 
Um, anything that's kind of loose fit, oversized is another keyword you want to use. Oversized tunic, those are great keywords because a lot of people are looking for that style. Or conversely, maybe something is fitted. You can say something is fitted and has stretch to it. That is something that also people are looking for. So if something's fitted, it looks more contour to the body. Boyfriend style means it is looser fit, almost like this. This is a little bit of a boyfriend style tee I have on right now. Um, anything that's slightly larger, slightly looser, these are super popular right now. So if you have like a graphic tee, you can put in graphic tee, boyfriend style, that kind of thing. V-neck, scoop neck, I'll go into that in a second. But yeah, V-neck means just like my shirt, it ends in a V. There's also scoop neck and there's also crew neck, which means it ends right up here. So take a look at your item and see what kind of neckline it has. That's something that people do search for. In addition to scoop neck, there is boat neck, which means that it comes, it's a long open style neckline, like the pictures I'm showing here. When you see that, that is called boat neck. And then if it is off the sleeve entirely or does not cover the shoulders, that means it is cold shoulder or off shoulder. That's definitely a kind of top you're going to want to specify. Especially if you're just flat laying it and someone might not be able to tell, it's good to put in there that it is a cold shoulder or open shoulder or off shoulder top. And then of course long sleeve, short sleeve, three quarter sleeve. There is cap sleeve also. This was like more in when I was in high school. I don't know if it's making a comeback, but cap sleeve is just the barely any sleeve that's there. Bell sleeve means that it is opening wide at the wrist or at the elbow. It has like a fluted wide opening. Fluted is another word that you can use. Kind of a 70s look. There is also a Henley top, which means that it is, you know, it might be long sleeve, short sleeve, usually long sleeve. Henleys are usually long sleeves. And they have just a few buttons at the front. That is called a Henley. And so that's something, again, you want to specify. And I'm going to go over as many styles as I can tonight, but I'm not obviously going to cover absolutely everything because it's not possible. Um, this video would be hours long. So I'm going to cover the things that most frequently occur with the styles that I find. Now as far as material goes, there is ribbed. Ribbed means it has that seam that usually indicates some kind of stretch or form-fitting style. Like a lot of thermals and a lot of winter outdoor wear is kind of ribbed like that, so that's something to keep in mind. Mine that I'm wearing currently has happens to be a graphic burnout tee, so when it has this velvety, almost sheer material, kind of looks worn and vintage, that is called burnout. Something can be knit or cable knit, and if it has that cable knit look, it has, you know, a, the classic knit, thick, chunky pattern. That's more common in sweaters, but it occurs sometimes in tops and blouses as well. And of course, crochet tops. If you see something that looks like it was crocheted and has some open weave to it, that's another keyword you might want to use, open weave crochet. Those kinds of tops are kind of popular if you ever come across that. A lot of tops that I come across have these little pom-poms on them, and that is called a pom-pom top. That's a keyword you want to use, as well as Swiss dot. Swiss dot kind of looks like polka dots, but not really. It's like a texture, usually on a silkier style fabric. And I come across this quite frequently and I never knew what it was until I searched it and found out it was called Swiss Dot. So something to keep in mind for sure. If you see a top that has little cutouts in it, like geometric cutouts, that can be called laser cut. And you can use this keyword for shoes as well. If you see shoes that have like a little cutout detail pattern, that's called laser cut and that's a detail that you want to sneak into your title for sure. Then occasionally you'll come across like a textured, usually floral or some kind of pattern textured silky fabric that's called brocade and it has like a thicker material. It's a popular design pattern in like India and with a lot of tops that I find that are like J. Crew or Anthropology, I see that fabric a lot so that's something that you definitely want to mention. Also embroidered, embroidered just means it has very elaborate stitching on it and it might have flowers, it might have a peasant style as well. Like I think of Johnny Was, that's a classic common peasant style or tunic style embroidered blouse that they have often. Embroidered especially if something's embroidered, you do want to put that in there because a lot of people are looking for detailed embroidered items and it will definitely command a little bit more money. If something is peplum, that means it cinches at the waist and then poofs out <laughs> to kind of highlight the smallest part of your waist. So peplum, there can be peplum dresses, peplum tops, blouses, anything that cinches in like that I call peplum and that's just a popular keyword definitely to use. Waffle knit kind of goes in with a ribbed top, but waffle knit has a like a distinct almost like waffle iron look to it. And waffle knits are most commonly thermals as well. So 
Usually when I find a waffle knit, I throw in thermal as a keyword too because thermal tops are popular with brands like Free People and whenever I find those, I put in waffle knit thermal just so people know when they're searching, mine will pop up. Poplin is any kind of crisp white, usually crisp white blouse, button front, it can have a collar, it's a little bit of a looser fit, it's not super fitted. So poplin again is like crisp and white and a keyword that you want to throw in with kind of like a wear to work or work style fashion. A corset top is exactly like it sounds, it cinches you in just like a corset and it can have long sleeve, short sleeve, it has that cinched laced up detail, you can throw in corset as a keyword. Asymmetrical means that it is not obviously symmetrical. There's one side longer than the other or it's high and low, high in the front, low in the back, that's called high-low. Um, we'll go over that when I go over dresses, but asymmetrical can mean either the neckline is asymmetrical or the hem or the way it's styled or the way it's ruched. So that's definitely something to throw in there if you see any kind of asymmetry. A tuxedo top has the ruffly front, kind of like a men's tuxedo shirt, except it can just be worn alone for women's fashion. And that can also be called pin tuck, a pin tuck blouse um, that has some button up detail at the front with some, looks like pleats, but it's called pin tuck and it's usually long sleeve shirt. Military shirts or military style shirts or jackets for that matter have kind of the olive green look to them. They are buttoned up. They might have pockets with buttons in the front, collars, they may be three quarter sleeve, and they have a distinct kind of military vibe to them. Military is pretty popular with some people, so I do throw that in there whenever I see something that makes me reminiscent of like a military style. So definitely put that in. Crew neck, like I mentioned, is when it just comes straight up to the highest part of your neck and collar. This is popular with men's sweaters, women's shirts sometimes. Crew neck sweaters are something that people often look for, so definitely throw that in versus like a scoop neck sweater or something like that. Halter tops tie in the back, so if it's like a tank top especially, it's the kind of tops that wrap around your neck and tie and are usually slightly backless. And then something that has a Peter Pan collar, has like a Peter Pan style scoop collar that looks a little bit old fashioned, but that can be popular as well. If something is made of silk, linen, or another very high quality fabric, wool, you're gonna wanna put that in there too. Merino wool, it can be Angora, mohair. Any specialty style of fabric is worth putting into your title so that people know, because those are definitely less common to come across. So for sure throw that in. I always, especially with silk and linen, linen is one of my go-to fabrics that I put in the title because it is really popular and it seems to sell a lot faster than other fabrics. And then lastly, log and look, and these are popular with pants as well, but log and look is like a very beachy, loose tunic style, peasant style, oversized type fabric. It's usually linen and it has like a very Martha's Vineyard vibe or um, beachy vibe, but yeah, like those kinds of tops do sell really well for me. And Log and Look is just something that you can throw in to make sure that people who are looking for that style can find it. Okay, you guys, that wraps up this video about shirts, blouses, and tops. Next video will be about sweaters. I'm gonna make this, I think, a five-part series, so please be on the lookout for that. And just to make you guys aware, because my kids are in school, I'm gonna be posting a lot more. I have a goal for September to get 10 videos up, so <laughs> crossing my fingers, if I, if I just manifest that out loud, I can actually do it. Um, I wanna put out a lot more content for you guys. I have a whole list of ideas of things I wanna do, videos I wanna make, tips, tricks, help, um, but my lack of time has been really, really hard. But now that I have a little more time, I'm excited to create a ton of great content for you. So in that vein, please subscribe to my channel if you like content like this. Turn on that notification bell. If you wanna be notified every single time I post a video, it would really help me out. Leave a comment down below if this helped you. If I missed any styles, drop them below so that other people can find them. And again, you guys, thank you so much. I hope this helped you. All right, take care, you guys. I will catch you next time.